Hey everyone, uh, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. Uh, sorry for the slight delay if you're watching on the uh, an, on the live stream, uh, uh, but we are all here now, and we've got the uh, the, the technology working. Uh, so I'm really excited. This is my second uh, live stream on uh, Westworld, and uh, I've got uh, this time. It's not just me. I've got a very special guest, uh, someone I'm sure you all know, uh, Justin Thomas uh, from the Justin Thomas Show. Also uh, runs the Westworld. Amino. Uh, I'll let him explain that. Uh, Justin, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah, what's up, everybody? Thank you for coming. Sorry for the delay. Um, in North Carolina, they're working on my internet. Like, actually, right now, there's a guy outside of my house. So if anything happens, I'm just going to jump in on my iPad just using my uh, data. So uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here and really looking forward to talk about Westworld. So any questions you guys have, hopefully, we'll be able to, to field them the best we can. And like I said, if there's any tech issues, just let us know in the chat. Fantastic. Okay, guys, so the way that we're going to run this is, um, uh, thank you, we've got a few questions that we'll we'll get to in just a moment. Obviously, if there's any super chats, we'll, uh, we'll go to them straight away. Uh, but I thought what we'd do is we'd just start out, uh, the idea here is to, to just uh, unload what we know so far about season two. Uh, so, I mean, I'll start off with a few basics, but then I think what we'll do is, uh, I know Justin uh, is, is, uh, has been looking into uh, new characters, returning characters, and where we're at with all of that. But in case you don't know the basics, new season starts uh, 22nd of April. Uh, there will be 10 episodes, um, and uh, the, the the promise is a bigger season than last time. Outward looking, uh, thinking a lot more about uh, moving forward rather than just the season one was sort of like a prequel. Season two is like an explosion outwards. So that's the that's the basic idea. Uh, we will be having multiple timelines again, uh, and so obviously with uh, with having hosts and all the rest of it, some characters there will be a little bit of uncertainty about who's a host who's not a host but uh justin do you want to just sort of pick up on uh some of the characters we got perhaps some of the characters we thought may be dead uh um, not sure but we've got a bit of confirmation on them and maybe also a couple of new characters yeah absolutely and i do just want to say um that yeah we are going to be probably really trying to guess this season who is a host and who is not as far as multiple timelines it was confirmed earlier um actually late last year now that they weren't going to be playing that game like they played in the first season where, where it's not clear what we're uh, actually seeing that we will be seeing flashbacks but it will be uh, very apparent when we're seeing them they're not going to be uh, trying to play with the multiple timelines uh, as they did in season one which I, I'm really actually thankful for uh, but yeah we're going to be getting flashbacks but it'll be clear uh, what you're seeing they're not it's not going to be a guessing game this season and as far as characters that are coming back I think a lot of us, especially hardcore fans, knew that LC and Subs. I mean, they've they've been hinting that uh, throughout all the you know social media that they do in the Delos Incorporated and uh, the websites and stuff. That they they're definitely back. We see them in the trailers. Um, the big news was um, Nolan and Joy, the showrunners, um, Christopher Nolan and Lisa Joy, who uh, are the main showrunners of the show, came out and said that Anthony Hopkins will not be. They confirmed he will not be back in the series. That we will see young Ford, but we will see a different actor eventually playing him. That means no CGI Anthony Hopkins, no um, Anthony Hopkins whatsoever. So it is, um, unless they're lying to us, you know, blatantly, which really isn't something that television shows do. Um, they, they, if they want to, you know, have a cliffhanger or something, they might leave it a little bit, you know. <sighs> I would say a little bit vague, but they were pretty clear about this. So, I mean, it's kind of insulting to the audience if you just straight up lie to them and say he's not going to be in it. And then he is. So I would I would write that off as as I thought at the end of season one, that Anthony Hopkins, unfortunately, will not be joining us again. But I think that there's really nowhere to go but down for him. He had a great 10 episodes. So why would you mess that up? So I, I think it'll be interesting, but we will see a younger Ford, uh, but that'll be played by a, a different actor. And it doesn't sound like they haven't cast yet. As far as casting goes, we actually we can tell quite a lot about what we're going to see this season by the new casting. I've been covering this since the um, end of season one, and they announced fairly quickly uh, some casting for the security in particular. So in season one, we noticed that we have a lot of stubs, and uh, that's about it. The I don't think we can name one other security member, and we only have stubs until 
he disappears. He's actually going out with Elsie, who is, uh, I think, a be behavioral tech, I think is her actual job. So they didn't have, I mean, like there, it was a lot of just glorified extras. But they've cast people like um, Jonathan Tucker, who's actually one of my favorite actors. He's a great character actor. He's in Justified, American Gods. He uh, was in Kingdom, which was a really good show that just ended. He is going to be one of the main security guards. We have uh, Gustav uh, Skarsgård, Floki from Vikings. that's going to be joining us. He will also be on the security team. Fars Fars. Um, I, I, he's from Zero Dark Thirty. Obviously, I'm saying that name the best I can. Uh, and we have one female, I believe she's from The Leftovers, Betty Gabriel, joining our security staff. So you can see that the security staff, these actors, they're not paying what it costs to get people like Jonathan Tucker and Gustav Skarsgård to not have lines. So we're definitely going to have a lot of storylines, probably main storylines, you know, revolving around security and what's happening. Uh, it's not just going to be Stubbs watching the screen every once in a while. So we, we definitely will have a focus on the security and what's going on. Another interesting casting, and we can dive more into these in a minute, is Katya Herbers. Now, she plays a guest who they say um, comes to the rescue in um, the park's you know darkest moment. Because it is worth noting that we will pick up this season, this has been confirmed, after the massacre. It has been subdued when we pick up in season two. We will see flashbacks of what went on during you know, the events that started in our season one finale, but we will not be diving. It won't just be five minutes after the season one finale. Quite a few months apparently will have passed and we will have clear flashbacks of what happened. So Katya Herber, she was in The Leftovers. A lot of big name actors and actresses that they you know, added to the cast and you can tell they're going to have a storyline revolving around them because they're not going to pay money for somebody to have them sit there and be mute. Um, okay. Can I, can I pick up on three of them? I know there might be a couple more to come. Can I pick up on three things, which I, I, I mean, I've seen a few of the people. Oh, we've had a, uh, we've had a super chat there. PC gaming five, uh, five pounds. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Um, uh, can I pick up on Ford? Cause there was a lot of love going on for, for Anthony Hopkins there. Uh, what, I read uh, was uh, what seems to me to be quite equivocal language, quite uh, muddy language that saying when asked, was that actually Ford who died uh, saying, yes, that was a real sacrifice that he made, not yes, he's definitely dead and he's never coming back and we're never going to see Anthony Hopkins again. So personally, I wouldn't write off Anthony Hopkins returning again at some point, whether it's season two or a bit later, I don't know. But personally, I could see uh, Anthony Hopkins coming back at some point. Um, uh, oh, we've had another super chat, Emilio Camacho Ariche, two euros, uh, saying, can you answer William Pitcher's question? Uh, I'll just go and have a look for that, but uh, while I do that, Justin, do you want to just pick up on what I just said there about, uh, about Ford? Yeah, I mean, because I'm going to have to disagree with you on this because I just did the video uh, yesterday. Uh, let's see what they said to Entertainment Weekly. This, this, that goes back to what I was saying, that there is times when you insult your audience by just straight lying to them, which is not something somebody like Nolan or Joy would do. Um, and then there is, you know, when they're being vague with, with how they're describing something and then it leaves it open to, um, you know, possibility. Let's see what exactly they said. Let me read this quote here. I got to pull it up. They got... I think I might have to watch one of my own videos here. So, <laughs> um, yeah, their, their language was pretty uh, straightforward. I'll find it here. Sorry. Um, and now I did report that it looked like he was going to be on set because he was uh, looking like he was going to be on location. But that was literally days away from filming King Lear over in the UK. And I'm not going to pretend I know how Anthony Hopkins lives or what his exact schedule is. But I do know from researching uh, his, you know, actual films and projects he's done for the last 10 years, a roundabout pattern of his schedule. And he is not jet setting at his age. Um, you know, not saying anything. I'm just saying that he is at a point in his career where he picks his projects and he does what he wants and he doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do. And he's definitely not rushing from location to location. So this kind of was a red flag for me right away when I saw that he was, going off to shoot this uh, King Lear over in the UK literally one day after he's supposed to be on location. So I found that to be a little faulty. Let me, uh, I am finding the 
actual quote here. Well, wh while you do that, uh, William Pitcher's question was about the actress that played Valkyrie in Thor, which I have to admit I don't know. Charlotte who Hale. Charlotte Hale is um, who she okay. played. Okay, well, yes, so she is definitely going to be back. We saw her. Um, uh, if, you, if you look in the description to this, uh, this live stream, actually, you'll see there's a link to some new photos that came out just a few days ago. Uh, one of those is of her in a she's with bernard and what looks like a number of other survivors from the massacre so i think what we'll see is that uh and we'll get onto this uh, slightly later on but with her i can certainly see that bernard seems to be part of the rescue team that goes out to try and find the survivors uh and so i think she is going to be one of the survivors she's going to come back in and then she's going to be the face of delos present day delos so yes she's definitely going to be back there yeah uh, have I have you, a direct that quote. Yeah, I got a direct quote on her situation. They actually um, shed some light on her situation, and, and you're pretty much spot on there. It's confirmed that she's back. Um, she survives the board meeting. It's coming straight from this is a press release they do. So, I mean, I guess spoilers, but I mean, anything that is given in Entertainment Weekly, I don't know. They obviously want you to know it um, going into the story. Um, she's back and causes trouble. Uh, Lisa Joy says she went from being this controlled person playing the chess game with Ford. And then he uh, took her Keenan Queen out in one uh, swoop. Now she's left at the mercy of the host like everyone else. So we will see her being, you know, picked up probably by the security early on in the um, season uh, two. But we will see some flashbacks of her probably, you know, being subjected to whatever the hosts are going to choose to do with these characters. And I'm just trying to find, I'm pulling up my um, quote on Ford here. Okay. This is the exact language. Ford was really and truly killed by uh, Dolores in the season one finale. He's not expected to return played as Anthony Hopkins. We will, however, see a younger version of Dr. Ford in flashbacks played by another actor at some point. So Ford was really and truly killed by Dolores in season one's finale. He's not expected to return as played by Hopkins. Okay, so that doesn't that I mean. I, I always see later seasons him popping up in some form of a reverie or, you know, um, but yeah, there's no more Hopkins. So I have to really believe that the the human Ford is dead. Yeah, I mean, uh, I as with all of these things, I think where I come at uh, is to say, uh, even if that was the human Ford who died, uh, yes, there was definitely a death happening there. Uh, when we went and saw Ford's off-grid little lab, then he was creating a host. And we don't know who that host was, but for me, the most logical thing would be another version of himself. He's already created another version of Arnold with Bernard. And so for me, I think he was creating another version of himself. Um, uh, we've had another couple of uh, super chats. Kerry McDonald, thank you so much, $10. What path do you think that the man in black will uh, will take? And what is the significance of the wolf wa walking through massacres? Love you all, uh, XOXO Robert. Oh, thank you so much. Mwah. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, and something from Amber Lynn. Love seeing you guys together. Thank you. That's that's really kind. Should we just pick up on those two questions? Uh, uh, that was ten dollars from Amber Lynn. Thank you. That was amazing. Yeah. Thank uh, you, so, Amber, another uh, Patreon of mine. Thank you guys for showing absolutely. up. Absolutely. So uh, so Kerry's two questions. First of all, about the man in black. Uh, well, shall I kick off this one? And then, Justin, if you want to, to sort of come in on it. Um, I think, uh, again, going back to those, uh, those photos that we had, the new photos, we saw one of him uh, what looked like immediately after the massacre. So he's clearly survived. He looked a little bit in shock. To be honest, uh, which you can you can kind of understand, uh, and then we see him. He seems to be in a new outfit, and uh, the, uh, the the Entertainment Weekly article talked about him going on a new mission, which is suitably vague. But I think this is about for him. This story is now going to be about him. Uh, truly trying to understand who he is as a human. So what he was, the season one, uh, the man in black, the sort of present day season one, was about him going through this experience to try and feel alive, thinking that he would, the maze would give him the deeper mysteries and understanding. And he felt he couldn't do that until sudden, until he was in real danger. And now he is in real danger. So now what we're going to see is him going through this 
uh, sort of uh, experience of, of, of trying to stay alive and trying to find out who he is as a person through this season. So that's that's where I think his, his journey is going to be going. Uh, Justin, have you got any other thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you said it pretty well. I think, I mean, this is a story uh, on both sides, not only for the man in black, but, uh, you know, the hosts, especially the ones that have achieved so-called sentience, um, is be careful uh, what you wish for type of deal. Uh, man in Black's main uh, motivation was to re he was chasing this dream he had, you know, this this re experience that he had with Dolores those 30 years ago the whole time. And, and we saw, I mean, he's it's not exactly a, a knight in shining armor uh, story, but he was trying to, you know, in his mind, you know, gaining back, he was trying to bring Dolores back to who he felt she was. But, you know, it is also, Yes, she was finding herself during that time, but he was really trying to bring back who who he enjoyed, you know, the Dolores that he experienced. And he was willing to obviously do this through the most uh, cruel, um, disgusting ways. You know, I mean, Dolores's main uh, loop w was to actually be assaulted every night. You know, I won't even get into it. So he was willing to put her through all sorts of hell to supposedly bring her back and, and bring back this true person. So you know, and he wanted the stakes to be real. He he essentially wants what he experienced to be real, just like we've all got dreams. He wants to make it a reality. So that, you know, includes the good and bad form as well. He wanted to be able to be shot and hurt. He got his dream. He probably looks like he's in shock because he was shot in the arm. I assume you would probably go into some sort of uh, shock after that. So I, I, I think that, you know, he's going to have to deal with that Dolores isn't just going to find herself become uh, self-aware and jump back into his arms because again he's only remembering the time that he had with her that's not essentially who she is as a whole also on the other side with the host we have to think about now same thing for them they want their independence they they want to be you know or we want them to be self-aware uh they're on this journey inwards and what do they do once they gain this um there's a lot of ethical questions for them how do they treat the hosts that are not as advanced I forget the exact number, but uh, I think that by the coding, it's like 80% of them aren't. So, you know, what do they do with the guests that aren't evil? Because I think we're going to see, especially Katya Herbers, seems like a very straight played character uh, by the way they describe her. So the guests that aren't horrible, are they just going to be murdering innocent people? Because even though we didn't see too many innocent people in season one, they were there. There was that guest that was going on playing the game straight with Teddy, going on those quests. I think she's with him when they attack Wyatt. So what do these hosts do? I mean, is it right to gun down everybody at that gala? You know, just because they've been subjected to these horrors from other humans. So there's a lot of be careful what you wish for. And how do you deal with this power? As we see, Maeve is, you know, essentially taking advantage of uh, almost immediately last season takes advantage advantages of uh, other hosts with her powers so that's not much different than you know the humans taking advantage of them so you know we'll have to see it's just like the neanderthals and uh, us you know like only one came out on top so are they going to despise the hosts that are not sentient or whatever you want to refer to it as are they going to try to help them you know what I mean? Because a lot of times when you see flaws that were once flaws of your own or deep inside, you you tend to, you know, get very angry. So I could see these hosts, especially Dolores, becoming very angry with the hosts that are not as, you know, self-aware of her. So I think it's going to go both ways. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> I think the man in black is going to, you know, be in, in a little bit of a pickle. I think he's going to get uh, sick of that gunshot wound real quick, <laughs> um, I, I, especially I mean, when he, he doesn't have Dolores there. He, he may well do. I mean, I think I think he's also going to be uh, w some of the most interesting characters, I think, in this season will be the characters who kind of straddle the the host world and the guest world. Uh, uh, so, for example, Bernard is the, the the main example of this, but also Maeve. She starts she's she's uh, she's got Felix there on her side. And we see uh, we see with the man in black, one of the, the pictures, the stills from the. Uh, the trailer, the Super Bowl trailer we saw, was of him with what looks like Lawrence in the background. So, so again, he's teaming up with uh, with one of the the hosts. So, I think that the, the longer game here is not hosts versus guests. It's going to be how do we actually come to some kind of accommodation between the two? Um, uh, we've had a couple of uh, so, um, a couple of quick uh, 
uh, other super chats we had. Uh, Emilio Camacho Ariche said, can you answer Living My Rhapsodies question, uh, which is uh, about Ford again, saying, what if he just put his mind into oh, a completely uh, different yeah. body? A non uh, which I think is uh, is a great question. He could have done. I think one of the one of the the next steps that we can we can take with this story is very much uh, the idea that if you've got hosts that where the body is different to the mind and the memories and the the soul, if you like, then of course you don't need to have the the the, the two matching up in the way that we think we do. Why do they even have to look human? They might look completely different. Um, uh, so uh, so yes, I think he could well have done, but I. I feel, given the fact that Ford has already created uh, uh, Arnold, his old partner, as well as his old family unit and himself uh, as hosts, I think there's a fair chance that if he created another version of himself, then it would be looking like himself. But it's possible. It's absolutely possible. Any thoughts on that one, Justin? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I do think to a point that we need to accept that Ford's sacrifice. Listen, we all love Anthony Hopkins. Um, we all loved the chess master. You know, I mean, it, it's a very um, the tail foundry does a good video about this because essentially the antagonist in season one is, is moving the story. Anthony Hopkins It's a very odd way uh, to run a narrative. So it was a very intriguing character. It was a, a, a very well done, uh, you know, job. Hopkins for body uh, they, he will become it but I mean he's just talking about the ideals behind what he was doing in my opinion and as far as showing a host being made in the old lab in the situation where you're right they show has to be something it's going to come up and it's you know it's going to be utilized it wasn't just you know like oh this would be cool if this machine was making a host but i don't think that was a specific host what i believe that, that was was we're going to be learning a lot this season uh from what they've said about the biology of the host that they actually can be killed and about how they work and about the like anatomy of of the actual host and what goes into making them further than you know felix uh Okay, Justin. I don't know whether you can hear me. Your your audio is going, and you're, you're starting to break up a little bit. So, uh, so I'm just going to pick up here for one moment, and uh, and maybe if you can if you can hear this, then perhaps you can have a look at that, um, uh, guys. So, uh, thank you. Keep keep the questions coming in uh, there. I just there was another one euro from uh, from Emilio. Thank you so much. That's really kind. Um, and Kerry, I'm sorry. We just quickly skated past your. Uh, your second question about the significance of the wolf walking through the massacres. I have to admit, for me, this is this is something I've not looked into yet, so I haven't got a full answer. I tend to think of uh, of this as being um, uh, one of those things like John Woo has doves. Uh, I think that 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 Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy uh, have perhaps put in the wolf, but maybe uh, maybe there's more to it. Maybe there's something symbolic there. I don't know. If if anyone else has got any ideas, do uh, do let me know in the chat. Uh, that'd be fantastic. Um, uh, Kerry McDonald, uh, again, thank you. Uh, Two dollars. Why do you think Ford sacrificed himself? For me, this is, and I appreciate Justin's not here to defend his perspective here. This is one of the two main concerns I have with this idea that he sacrificed himself because I don't actually see the narrative need for him to do that. Why he would uh, go about uh, having himself shot because I can understand that perhaps this might be part of helping Dolores become sentient. Uh, is to get her to go through again what she went through the first time with Arnold. I get that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be him who dies. And the second part of that uh, is that I can see uh, that uh, all the way through season one, Ford is so controlling. He's so much wanting to be uh, the puppet master, uh, making sure he knows what's going on everywhere at all times. Um, and... It just seems odd to me 
that he would suddenly uh, stop that and just put his hands up and say, you know what, you can get on with it now. So I think in some way his control is going to carry on, whether he's there personally or whether uh, he's got a host version of himself going on uh, or whether there's a, uh, um, uh, other plans that he set in place to to sort of take forward, uh, then uh, then I think that his influence will carry on. So uh, I hope that answers that question, uh, Kerry. Looks like Justin's just uh, just just his computer's dropped out for a moment. So hope hopefully he will be back uh, soon. Um, I think what we'll do uh, very quickly is just pick up on a couple of questions that came through. Um, I had some on uh, Twitter from Leslie Galen, uh, who said uh, Abernathy didn't escape, um, which I think I would agree with. And I think we will see Peter Abernathy. This is Dolores's dad. I think we will see him again um, uh, as quite an important character um, with because if you remember that the uh, the Charlotte Hale's big plan was for Lee Sizemore, um, uh, the the sort of the British head programmer guy, to upload all the information about Westworld into Peter Abernathy's head and then get him to take that information out uh, of of the park so that they had that safe. Uh, so I think he did not get out of the park. And I think that we're going to see him being one of the most valuable objects within the park that Delos are trying to retrieve. Uh, so that's the first part of that. Uh, and the second part was also uh, wondering, and this ties into what I was talking about a moment ago, wondering whether old Bill, uh, old Bill, Wild Bill Hickok, the 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 ancient host that Ford was talking to uh, a lot when he was just like. Uh, uh, whiling away the evenings down in, down in the cellars, um, uh, whether or not perhaps Ford left some vital information with him that Bernard might pick up. I think that's possible. I don't know there, was, uh, there were very few clues about that, but I think that is entirely possible. I think that we'll see Bernard spending a lot of this season picking through what's really going on in the park and that's actually that's going to be what my next video is going to be next tuesday is unpicking what bernard is going to be discovering because i think there's an awful lot there with the data smuggling um and also with the um uh, the big robot that you saw in a couple of the the scenes from from the trailer uh Guys, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, Justin just put, just put it. I'm going to jump out and jump back in again. He said in the chat. So uh, so hopefully he will be back in a moment. Um, we also had a couple of questions from the uh, Amino um, that uh, Justin didn't get a chance to to discuss. But if you if you're, if you're not aware of the of the Amino, the Westworld Amino, it's an app which pulls together. Uh, fans of Westworld from all over the place. So it's got links across to the YouTube community. It's got links across to the Reddit community and the wiki page and all the rest of it. Uh, and Justin runs that. Uh, and so he, we've got a couple of questions from people there. Uh, one of them from Henry Binder or Binder was talking about Trace Decay, the episode, which was episode eight, uh, which he was saying he didn't like. Um, I, I have to say... Pardon me. Um, I didn't mind episode eight. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't like it, uh, but it was. I find it very hard to see individual episodes in season one as separate to the whole. Uh, the way I see it is that there that the whole arc of the of the season needed a few slower episodes just to make it work. And for me, Trace Decay episode eight was quite a quite a hinge episode. We'd had a huge amount of revelations uh, in episode seven, the preceding episode with Bernard being a, a host and so on. Uh, and in episode eight, everything was just reconfiguring and getting ready for the finale, which was going to happen in episodes nine and 10. Uh, so we had, um, for example, uh, Dolores realizing where the end of the maze was. We had um, uh, uh, Charlotte Hale realizing she had to change her plans for her end game, and we had uh, Maeve getting her uh, her reboot, which allowed her to control the other uh, the other hosts, therefore allowing her to do her escape. So, uh, so I think 
episode eight was a bit slower, but it was also quite a hinge episode that allowed us to move on uh, to other places. Um, okay, let's go back to the uh, to the chat. Um, uh, let's just uh, do a few quick uh, shout outs. Um, uh, who have we got here? Cuddle Doomsday. Uh, Broke Black Man 94. Uh, we got your questions also off of uh, the Amino. We'll come to that in just a moment. Um, uh, and just very quickly, you asked about Samurai World. I think we've had it confirmed that it's now at, it was actually Shogun World, not Samurai World, just as a, as a sort of a, a technical thing. I think we will see it. I think we will. Uh, I think that Maeve is going to go there. And I think we saw that just a hint of it uh, in the. Uh, the Super Bowl trailer. Um, uh, I can talk about that a little bit more uh, if you'd like. Um, Tycat, $1.99. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Will Teddy uh, eventually oppose Dolores? Um, this is a very good question. Now, Teddy, I have to admit, I found one of the dullest characters. Was a bit slower. One. Uh, oh, we, I think we've got Justin back. Hey, Justin. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's going a little bit. That nor'easter like totally messed up everything in North Carolina. So not a problem at uh, all. We're just in the middle. When of When did that. I start going? Uh, don't worry. We've we, we've we've moved on to another question from Tycat, uh, who's who's asking, will Teddy uh, eventually oppose Dolores? Um, I'll just give you a couple of minutes just to get yourself sorted out, and while I uh, while I give my thoughts on that one. Um, I think for me, Teddy was one of the the, the dullest characters in season one, um, uh, because he was still caught up in his loop. Uh, now, season two, I think one of the things from the promo pictures that I found most interesting was that he was one of the main characters. He was one of the the key characters that they had uh, there for the photo shoot. Um, and it was kind of teased in that Entertainment Weekly interview that he would be gaining sentience but towards the end of the season. So he's one of these ones who, to start with, I think Maeve is still going to be, oh, not Maeve, Dolores will still be telling what to do. And that, again, from the pictures we've seen, I think that we've seen an awful lot of that. But I think he is probably, and I think perhaps this is where your question comes from, out of all of the hosts, he is one of the ones who's, uh, who seems most uh, compassionate in his heart and perhaps most uh, or, or least warlike in a way. Yes, he was willing to step up to the plate when when he saw people being threatened, uh, but that didn't seem to be his, uh, his, his initial uh, programming. So I could see him questioning what appears to be an incredibly aggressive Dolores going through the season two. Um, I think that's more likely to happen towards the end of the season, uh, but yes, I could certainly see it happening. Justin, have you got any thoughts on on Teddy and Teddy's role with Dolores? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's, uh, you know, I don't know if I was um, breaking up when I said it, but, you know, what the hosts do with other hosts that aren't completely self-aware, do they treat them as pawns? Uh, so I think that, yeah, there definitely is going to be... Um, you know, some conflict between Dolores and, and Teddy at some point, especially if he does become self-aware, because how is he going to feel about being a pawn for so many years? Uh, you know, it, really from uh, the man in black uh, for his game. And uh, I mean, he, his his narrative was to get killed every single night trying to protect Dolores. So what is Dolores going to do with him now? Because it does seem like, you know, Maeve has Hector, uh, you know, Dolores has Teddy. And it, how is she going to utilize him? Because we, we do need to remember, too, that even though that she's the, the show has said she's self-aware, she is on her Wyatt uh, narrative right now. So there's a struggle still going on within Dolores. So what is Wyatt going to be using Teddy for? And if, when Teddy finally comes around, how is he going to feel about being everybody's, you know, freaking, uh, you know, pretty much just he's filled with bullet holes every single night of his life. You know, I mean, he's everybody's. Uh, you know, um, punching bag, essentially. So, yeah, I think that it's going to bring up the ethical issues of, you know, how do the sentient hosts treat the 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 not yet sentient hosts? And I think there will be conflict and uh, uh, both with Dolores in the, in the Man in Black, for sure. I did see something about uh, Samurai World. Uh, just I wouldn't catch up um, if if it was just a gimmick to to show the other worlds. I think that Samurai World, because we do have a um, casting for that with uh, Hiroyoku uh, Sonata, 
and he's been in a he's a Japanese actor that's been in a lot of samurai movies. Now he's going to be in the season, and I think that we're more going to see samurai world bleeding into Westworld than going and venturing. And I don't imagine us seeing like a a full POV per se from samurai world. I see us having samurai world bleed in the west world especially with the chaos that's happening right now maybe the boundaries will get a little bit mixed um that's just my take and we do kind of see that um foreshadowed as well with the um the trailer the first trailer not the super bowl one with the Bengal tiger you know uh, and literally the blood bleeding into west world because remember it's not called delos incorporated it's called west world so i think that we're definitely going to see elements of other parks bleed in to Westworld, I think we're going to see emerging because really the bigger questions, which I'm sure we'll get to, is what is the overarching, you know, like what's the big plan for these hosts, you know? And I know you want to talk about the drones and stuff like that, but yeah, I definitely think that it's just to show us, just like that, in my opinion, the machinery to, uh, you know, operate on the hosts was just to show us that they have a, a field hospital per se, you know, like okay, this is happening, this is happening, and it's going to come into play later. Uh, type of deal but definitely I, yeah, I think that there's no way that a, a totally self-aware teddy won't be a little bit displeased with the way he's been filled with bullets every day of his life <laughs> that's all absolutely. i'll say on that one absolutely and i think i think this is a, a good reminder that uh we we shouldn't treat the hosts as a single entity when when each host gains sentience they will have their own viewpoints they will have their own ideas about what to do dolores at the moment as as uh, Justin said she's on her uh, her Wyatt kind of narrative. She's she's wanting to hunt down and kill all of the the humans that she can find. Pardon me. And uh, Maeve, however, seems to be yes. She's also just like blazing a trail wherever she can go. But she's wanting to find her daughter, and that's her motivation. And we'll find that each of each of the hosts as they gain their sentience so it's like gain self-awareness will have their own drive so we we can't think of them as being uh, a, a huge amorphous mass and i think dolores's power base will actually start to shrink the more of these of the hosts that gain sentience we get because she and also mave are able to control them at the moment but they probably won't be able to later um uh, Amberlyn, uh, Amberlyn McKay, uh, five dollars fifty-five. Thank you so much. How do you think Bernard will treat his newfound awareness that he is a host? Do you think he will be found out? I think this is uh, going to be one of the most fascinating things in this season. I think um, uh, Bernard uh, is clearly going to start out, and all of the promo pictures we've seen is that he is there with the humans so humans think that he is one of them but he is going to be aware that he isn't and i think what we're going to find is that he's going to be going on this journey through the season to understand not just himself but what's really going on in the park um uh i'll get on to the sort of the 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 drones the the the, the drone hosts is, uh, a little bit later perhaps uh but i think when we see him coming up to that the big white host the big white robot i think this is him exploring seeing what it is that's been going on all this time because remember he's got the memories uh somewhere uh presumably of of arnold he's certainly got the the thought processes he's got the mannerisms of arnold so he will be investigating and thinking what on earth has happened to this thing that has been created here in my name uh so i think that is going to be his main journey and yeah i think that inevitably at some point someone will realize that he is not a human um uh, justin have you got any thoughts on on bernard I think, I mean, well said. I mean, yeah, it, it would be a little bit uh, silly to think that the, all the sentient hosts are just on team sentient hosts. Uh, and I hate using that word sentience. I have a little bit of an issue with it. But, uh, you know, um, I think that, it, it, you know, you this is also about the power of storytelling and how stories mold us, the ones we are told and the ones that we tell. So, you know, essentially it's no different than somebody that has amnesia and is told a story and learns to maybe be with a family that he wasn't. What if they're, you just lie to somebody that's in a hospital. I mean, just take away the tech away from it and think about Bernard's situation. The story he knows is a story of a human. So he is going to still be sympathetic towards humans. I mean, it's not just going to be like, oh, I'm a robot now. So, or a host, whatever, I'm going to go join team host. And I think that it's really going to be judging them as much as, you know, if, 
when you are granted personhood, legally speaking, uh, you are not only able to be protected by the laws, but you're held to the laws as well. And I think that's kind of like a metaphor as well. You could take it as once these uh, hosts gain self-awareness that not only are they, you know, with it's just that with big responsibility becomes, you know, comes, uh, you know, or freedom comes responsibility, blah, 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 that type of deal. So, you know, how are they going to treat this newfound power? Great power becomes responsibility. Sorry, I can't think of that. But uh, and I noticed somebody brought up uh, earlier, what did Ford mean uh, by his quote about becoming music? I think that number one, Ford seems really cool in the show because he literally just quotes literature and never actually says anything that's his own. He'd be really annoying in real life. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of the guy that Ford was. I mean, like literally almost all of his lines are direct like quotes from literature and, you know, uh, famous uh, pop culture and stuff like that. I think he just meant that his creation will we'll live on through him. You know what I mean? Like these newfound self-aware hosts that that is his music. So I don't think we should take as literally um, as, as most do. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree. I think that Bernard is the most fascinating case. And I think he's the most clear cut case of a, well, what a host will do with self-awareness because essentially he was on free mode, whatever you want to call it with just a set narrative loop that Ford had given him, but he was acting within his own, you know, he was making his own, he had free will. He was making his own decisions. He was just working off of a uh, fictional um, storyline, essentially. So I think he's going to be the, the most interesting um, case of, uh, you know, the struggle within. Excellent. Um, guys, I just want to take a, a very brief pause uh, right now just to say a couple of things to my patrons, to my subscribers. I can see there's a, there's a lot of them out there uh, in, in in the chat room. Hi, guys. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, I just want to say uh, on Westworld, uh, as a couple of people have been asking, uh, yes, I'm going to carry on doing new Westworld content every Tuesday up to the season. Uh, and uh, when we get to season two, um, I will up that a little bit more. I haven't decided exactly how how I'm going to do that, but there'll definitely be more than one thing per week for me uh, on Westworld when we get to season two. Uh, definitely, there's going to be a, 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 a video per episode and a live stream. Maybe something else we'll see. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to say uh, to my patrons uh, is, uh, and I say this every single time, thank you. Um, uh, I, I really couldn't carry on doing this without your support, and uh, and and it means so much to me. So thank you so much. Um, uh, one of the things I do for my patrons is that uh, uh, my ten dollar patrons all vote every now and then on new videos that they want me want to see me do. Um, this time I gave them three possible Game of Thrones ideas, uh, and uh, as luck would have it, uh, two of them came out top. The first one uh, that they wanted me to do was on Kyburn, Kyburn, a character study, which came out just this last Saturday, so uh, so do go and check that out if you want. And the second one is uh, three tinfoil theories that I actually like. Uh, that will be coming out, I think, in about a week's time. Uh, I'm just writing that at the moment. Uh, so, so there's that. Uh, and then for all $5 patrons, uh, 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 then uh, there will be another one of my narrations from the, uh, the public domain pre-release chapters from the Winds of Winter. And I've been looking through it, and I think I'm going to do Barris and Selmy, uh, the first of the Barris and Selmy chapters, uh, which uh, in the books, he's very much alive, and he's in charge of Marine while Daenerys has gone off, and there is a battle brewing. Uh, and it's a really interesting chapter, so I'm very much looking forward to that. That's going to be in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, I'm going to be releasing that. Uh, so, guys, if you are interested in, in, in supporting my patron, that would be great. There's a link down below. Uh, patreon.com slash in deep geek uh, Justin is there anything that you want to just sort of call to people's attention stuff you've got going on yeah right now I am uh, getting back in the swing of things obviously there's been tech issues uh, but I am going to be doing starting uh, this week a uh, some brief recaps for each episode going from episode one to episode 10 uh, on Westworld, just for everybody that's getting caught up. So I'll be doing, uh, cause I was not, I did not have a channel when Westworld first came out. I just was running the blog site and was active in the community. So I'm gonna just do a brief recap of every episode, try to get out like two of those a week going up into the actual season. And, and really I've always kind of been mainly focused on Westworld. And uh, of course I do Game of Thrones and stuff like that, but you know, just just keeping the, the grind on and, uh, 
I just uh, was able to, thanks to my Patreons, I think a lot of them who are here, uh, able to purchase the uh, Adobe Suite um, for my um, After Effects, which I am brushing up on and going to be adding more animation into my channel and stuff like that. You know, I can't thank you guys enough for giving me the opportunity to, you know, grow um, not only in size, but in quality. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to doing these live streams as much as possible. Uh, hopefully I'm not sounding like a robot here uh, with, with, with the delay and all that, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm just looking forward to Westworld season two. I think we're gonna have a lot, uh, a lot to talk about. It's going to be a far more cohesive narrative this season. They had a lot more time to really, get this one right um because if you like we were talking about before this if you wanted to poke holes in the in the uh, plot of westworld you definitely need to have a lot of time on your hands because technically there's a lot of issues with ford's plan but it, it's an ambitious show that addresses so many things i think that a lot of people are going to fall in love this season with it so i mean there's just so many discussions to be had from the tech to the uh, philosophical, to even, uh, you can be talking about theology with this show. You could talk about just the whole old Western uh, entertainment for entertainment's sake, um, the narrative storytelling aspects of it. I mean, this show is endless. So that's why I kind of give it a break when you have a few plot holes here and there. But uh, the discussions you can have after the show are literally endless. So I'm just happy to be on with you, Robert, and hopefully we can do a few more of these. Absolutely. I mean, that's certainly the plan, uh, guys. Uh, I, I think in Justin, I found somebody who's uh, who's as obsessed about uh, Westworld as I am. So I'm really pleased that we're going to be doing uh, more of these uh, live streams together um, uh, as we go into the season and and through the season. Uh, so uh, we'll definitely be doing that. Uh, uh, Emilio, uh, two euros again, just saying thanks to you. Thank you. Uh, that's that's really generous. Um, uh, just before we get on to the the next thing uh i did say uh broke black man uh 94 that i would just pick up on your other question that you had off of, uh off of the amino um uh which was do either of us think that there will be a major character death uh, uh this season uh i'm gonna i'm gonna let justin answer that one first and then i shall i shall weigh in with my own thoughts in just one moment justin what do you think i i don't think so um i think that this is going to be just as robert had said earlier um that season one was the prologue of, of this series. It, it is set for five uh, seasons, uh, last time I checked. So they do have a, a overall plan. I think that this season we are going to be introduced to more uh, sympathetic humans other than Felix. And uh, I always forget the partner's name. Uh, and I know it's another cartoon, um, Sylvester. Um, you know, we're going to probably have a few more people that we'll play the guessing game with as far as who's a host and who's not. But more, most importantly, I think it's going to be set up for us to find out how we could lose a character like Dolores, because we're going to find out how they could actually be killed. Not, you know, because essentially right now there's not a lot of stakes for the host if they can just be put on the table and, and brought back, you know, no matter, I mean, Teddy is a great example of how much torture these things can go through and just be back with an hour. So there is evidently, they've said this, uh, you know, this isn't a, a straight quote, but uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but they've said, we're going to find out the biology of the hosts this season more about them. I think that's where that drone comes into play as well. So I think we're going to see more, more of the possibility of uh, who we could lose in, in the seasons to come more than losing a, a major character. But with the addition of these people like Katya Herbers, who seems to be somewhat of a human, uh, you know, hero in this story, and the addition of this, uh, you know, great cast for the security team, you know, we could easily fall in love with one of them. So who's to say who's a main character this season? Uh, you know, we're having so many additions in, especially on the staff side, that we could definitely lose one of the newcomers. But I don't see a Dr. Ford scale death, in my opinion. I think we'll just see the opportunity uh down the road for how we could lose dolores or teddy or you know hector or something like that mave yeah absolutely I, th I don't think i'd disagree with that i mean i wouldn't rule it out um uh but at the moment uh and a lot of this will i think depend on uh on what happens with mave securing uh the area below ground uh that the hosts cannot die they are still stored somewhere. They can just get downloaded back into a different body. So, uh, so that a whole group of people uh, cannot die. As for the humans, I think we've seen uh, most of the humans survive uh, into season two. Um, uh, I do. The the only character that I, I I'm not sure about is Logan. 
Now, I don't know, and this is going back into the old time stream, uh, which perhaps I think we'd, well, I'd quite like to, to discuss in just a second. Um, uh, but we're going to see a lot of the what happened after uh, Jimmy Simpson's capture, the, the young man in black, the young William, uh, one, when he emerges, how he suddenly gained control of the corporation uh, when, uh, at the time, this was Logan's family who were looking to invest, who were who were the, sort of the, the, the big and impressive company. So what happened there? And uh, I think Logan has to be somewhere in the present day uh, or dead. Now, one of those two options uh, uh, I, I think we will see happen perhaps this season. So it's possible that he will die in the old uh, timeline or it's possible that we will discover who he is in the current timeline. I think those are two different options. Um, uh, Justin, uh, can we uh, get on to that, the, the, the old timeline? What, what are your thoughts on where you think that's going to go? Because I know you've looked into the, the websites that, that they, they've put up with the, sort of all the, the um, investment opportunities in Delos and things like this. Where, where do you think that storyline is going to go? Well, I think that they made a great decision, uh, and especially, and thank you to Jimmy Simpson, uh, no matter uh, what Vanity Fair says, for uh, confirming coming back with me on Twitter late one night, uh, like seven months ago. But I was so excited when I found out that both him and Logan were coming back because that was one of the um, sacrifices I saw that um, the the you know the twist with the with the two timelines uh, that was one of the uh, fatalities of that uh, little uh, you know entertainment for entertainment's sake move I felt they made um, was the explanation of the transition from, you know, young William to the man in black. I just, you know, that wasn't enough for me. So I think a lot of that will be fleshed out in, in these um, flashbacks, which will be very, you know, it'll, you'll know when you're watching a flashback, like I said, it's not going to be playing with time like it did last season. Um, I think that we're going to see a lot of that. Uh, we do know James Delos uh, will be a character this season. It does look like it doesn't go well for him uh, from the trailer that we've seen. So I think that you have a valid point with Logan there that if there's going to be any main character we will see that dies, it, it might be in a, a flashback, but we're going to see how William like you, like you said that it was Logan's family that was taking the main control. How did William get it? So he has to go through not only Logan's family, but James Delos as well. So I think that we're going to see the transition to the dark side of William uh, throughout this uh, kind of a uh, corporate, um, you know, struggle. Um, his hostile takeover of Delos because, you know, his last name is not Delos. So how does he have the controlling share? It doesn't look like he got it in a very ethical way. So I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing a, a better fleshed out, uh, you know, narrative for why William is now all of a sudden, you know, a son of a bitch. He's like, I went home and then my wife just knew I was evil and killed herself. I was like, that's not doing it for me. But um, I'm happy we're going to see that. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll get more of that corporate, uh, corporate espionage. Like I said, the show has so many different themes to it that that was one of the ones that we were talking about earlier that was kind of overlooked with the uh, smuggling out of data and stuff like that in the bigger picture for the host. So there's a lot, a lot that brings to the table, but I think we're going to see a struggle between uh, Logan, William, and also uh, the Deloses. I think, I, I think I agree with that completely. I think that there's, uh, there's, there's actually quite a lot uh, that's going to be uh, just sort of played out in there. And I think quite a few of the images we've seen are probably actually going to be from that old timeline. Uh, I think one of the new images that we've got is of, of Angela dressed in, in the, the white dress, which looked to me like like she was back in, I think, episode two, when she was like this sort of welcome host. So I think we'll see her back in the old timeline. Um, I think uh, we saw Dolores. This is in the Super Bowl uh, trailer. There was Dolores there dressed up uh, and smiling with uh, a character who uh, it was either Arnold or Bernard. I think it was Arnold. Um, I think that was back uh, a long time ago as well. Um, and there was obviously a picture of Logan in a party uh, turning around and looking at someone. And I think that was probably uh, William coming into the party because uh, you can just certainly imagine when they first meet after all that happened in the park that would be quite a dramatic moment so i certainly hope that we see that moment so i think there's going to be a lot of different things going on uh in that uh in that timeline i think there's there's two more uh people or, or things that i just 
I, I'd, I'd like to cover today, uh, if that's all right, guys. Uh, we've not really talked about Maeve much. Uh, and I think, uh, for me, Maeve is, I find her an amazing character. I think Tandy Newton did a brilliant job uh, of acting in season one. Um, and I think that, for me, she is fascinating because not only has she... Um, taken a slightly different route to Dolores in, in having this slightly more compassionate side. It doesn't always seem to come across, but you can certainly see it in the way that she's turning around to look for her daughter uh, and in the way that she treats Felix, who is on her side. And she uh, she says, you know, you make a really bad human in quite a, uh, in quite a, a sympathetic way. Um, and so I think what we'll see with her is a lot of this kind of where does she pitch it uh, in terms of her character combined with the fact that she suddenly has almost Ford like capabilities. Uh, she can uh, resist commands from the humans, from, uh, from the security teams, uh, and she can control the hosts. So she can, when she's walking around, she can make things happen around her, which is in almost godlike powers so i think she is going to be going hunting for her her daughter i think one thing that i perhaps disagree with uh, with what justin said i think that she will go to uh shogun world or samurai world whatever we're, we're going to call it oh um, it is shogun sorry they confirmed yeah. it. so so uh, i think she is going to go there perhaps hunting for uh, for her daughter, I think that is where that happens. I think otherwise we'd have Shogun World as a as a separate place. I think that it's going to, the 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 bleed over will come by Maeve going in there. So that's my view. Uh, Justin, what are your thoughts on on where where Maeve might be going? Uh, well, I do have to disagree with her going in the show. She might go in there, but I, it was the park uh, number in the area was uh, thanks to all my uh, you know countless hours of <laughs> probably ways of going through all that, uh, you know, uh, terms and limitations and uh, stuff like that. That was Westworld where her daughter is located um, when they gave her the coordinates. Um, I, I, I agree with you on everything else. I think that, yeah, it's totally possible somebody will go in there. Um, I think maybe, yeah, her storyline was my favorite. Uh, as far as acting goes, Dolores, uh, Evan Rachel Wood, I, her narrative was not my favorite because I, I, I thought they kind of cheaped out with, with the plot twist that we all kind of saw coming from a mile away. But her, her acting, it was the acting Olympics, you know, her range is so vast in season one, but Maeve's storyline was so much uh, just more enjoyable for, for me overall. There were so many, again, different themes in, in her, her narrative. Uh, I mean, she, at some point she came off as, you know, like just a regular hardcore bad bitch, like kicking ass. And then other times it, she'd pop up like a Disney princess, you know, um, and uh, luring uh, Hector into her, you know, uh, her ploy. So I think that Maeve is, you know, going to definitely have different uh, motivations than Dolores. That's pretty clear. And I think that we do need to remember that she got off the train, but the bag that had everything she would need was on the train still. So information has most likely been smuggled outside of Westworld via that bag, uh, because that was all of Ford's narrative. So, and we do know he wanted that out. So, um, you know, I think that like, uh, I think Ty cat says right here about, you know, like, talking about the ethics behind the, William falling in love with Dolores and a mess with his like sense of decency and all that, that that's what I'm talking about. It's so great. There's these deeper conversations and, and we're definitely going to see, you know, the transition, like I was saying, and I like what Ty Cat said here, he's not inherently evil. Yeah. It's like, nobody's inherently evil. Um, that's like a Lord of flies way to look at things, which, you know, isn't necessarily true. So I totally agree with you on that one. Uh, Ty Cat. Um, I think it's just going to be interesting. Like I said, once the facade of the, the God that we put that created us, whether you're religious or not, we, we have this luxury of just saying, oh, this higher power made us. So we're different. But what happens when you go to the sausage factory and, you know, see the process? So Maeve is living in a different type of world. Her God or whatever you want to call it, her creator is something right in front of her that is she can see, you know, it's a physical manifestation of God. So what do you do when your God is just somebody in an office? You know, uh, it kind of takes away a little bit of that, uh, that argument we have of, for being so special. So it's going to be, how does she handle the power of a God? Is she going to be all knowing and decent? Or is she going to just, 
go and do whatever pleases her. So I think, you know, again, we're going to see heroes and uh, villains with both sides, human and host. So I just think it's going to be great. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. Uh, okay, guys, there's one more issue that I want to, to cover, which I shall uh, mention in a moment. If you've got any other questions, uh, now is your time to uh, to pop them into the chat uh, and, and we'll, we'll come to them to round off. But I, I sort of teased it a couple of times uh, because one thing that I'm uh, I'm fascinated by is that huge white robot that we saw uh, in the the Super Bowl trailer. It's again uh, in the promo pictures. It's there as one of the, I think there were six uh, people there all, all lined up, the main characters and this, this huge robot. It looks like one of the hosts um, uh, that's been made, but it's just not got any human features on it. It's just this human sort of mannequin. Uh, and from what we've seen, uh, Bernard finds it, encounters it. it. It sort of follows him and it seems to kill someone. Uh, so that's pretty much all we know. Now, uh, and also they seem to be called drone uh, hosts. Now, uh, I'm going to be doing a full video on this uh, in a week's time. Uh, so so this is just like a, a, a my first thoughts on this. Uh, and I, I'm quite happily going to pick Justin's brains now to see whether there's any other thoughts here. But I think that the drone... Uh, host is part of a larger plan by Delos, by the people owning the park. There is, I think, and this is tied up with all of the data smuggling, uh, but I think what's going on here is that they have been trying to work out how can they monetize all of this technology. And one of the ways that they can monetize this technology is by creating drones, like we have drones today that go off and uh, without any humans go fly off somewhere and, and, and sort of explode and, and kill people that you want to kill. What if you could have an army of hosts? Wouldn't that be ideal to sell to any government on the world? So I think that is the bigger plan that's going on here. And I think that is going to be part of Bernard's big story arc this time is to be discovering what's going on there. So so uh, I'm going to take out us, monetize or weaponize both. Um, I, I think uh, I, I think that's something that I'm going to be unpicking a lot more next week. But uh, Justin, do you have any thoughts on on that? Uh, and uh, uh, and particularly what that that huge robot that drone host might be for? Yeah, I mean, I it's that you're definitely right about, uh, you know, Bernard discovering it and, uh, you know, it, it has it has to actually be part of the larger plan for them because Bernard isn't aware of it. And he has all of the he was actually necessary to keep creating the host that him and Ford were making. The bigger plan is separate from Ford. It's not their, you know, the original um, vision from them the money people. Um, so yeah, I think that whether they're going to go, you'd have to think that, okay, if they just wanted a, a army of hosts, they had it years ago. I mean, look at Hector and uh, Armistice uh, in, in the season finale. They just chop through people. So, I mean, they're far beyond that. And, you know, but it does kind of still go hand in hand uh, with what we've seen from, from like people like Charlotte Hale, wanting to dial them back emotionally, because if you're going to have a army of killer robots, you wouldn't necessarily want to have them start, you know, be coming self-aware and having free will and especially feeling bad about the people that kill. So they would want to put a stop to that. So there is some definitely from what you're saying, there's evidence for all of what you're saying. And I think that, yeah, like Bernard's mission is going to be not only, you know, like what he does with his newfound uh, identity, um, but what he does for the, you know, actual i guess you yeah i think you said in a video species of of uh you know whatever these hosts so like he will see this military type i mean drone definitely hints at military and um, there's a lot of militaristic uh themes that we see even in these few trailer shots with the everything this season and look at the buggies are driving around and it's definitely we're getting a feel for stuff like that so i think that it would be feasible to say and not too uh much of a uh, tinfoil theory to think that the hosts that are in the park are there to maybe take over political um you know positions and, and mix in with society um we see right away uh, with uh, with 
Williams uh, entering the park when he runs into Angela that, you know, he can't tell the difference. So they definitely needed them to mix in to a certain point, but then they obviously need ones that are just straight killers. So the this different form of host is definitely, I think you're on the right track with that. And I think that you're you're definitely right about that's going to be Bernard's kind of arc is, you know, like what what is he going to do for his species? I guess I, I'm just going to stick with species. That sounds right. <laughs> um, I, I did want to answer one quick Q&A. Do we think that Dolores hunting people down and killing hosts could uh, like be so they're giving the reveries uh, it, that comes from the whole thing. Here's my take on that. Like the, one of the themes of season one is there's no such thing as a um, painless birth. And, and that's kind of what they go through, that they have to experience pain to to develop, uh, you know, their sentience and stuff like that. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that's one method. Uh, but it's not the only method. And I, I don't know. I mean, definitely. Could she be purposely going out trying to, you know, cause the pain of the rest of the host uh, to bring them to their center? Possibly. But I'd have to think knowing what she knows that 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 wouldn't be the way she'd go about it. I think that the show is going to be a little smarter than that and, and show her at least try a different method. I don't think she'd be so keen to go to the same method that was so brutally used on her. But that's just my opinion. I think that it's totally what you say has. You, I mean, yeah, you're definitely not, uh, you know, wearing a tinfoil hat with that one. It's totally possible. It's in line with what we've seen. I think, I think you just got another uh, super chat there. Thank you, uh, Linda. Yeah, thanks, Linda. That was twenty five dollars. That's really kind. Thank you so much. Um, uh, actually, everyone's been really generous with the super chat. So thank you, everyone who's who's, who's done it so far. I'll, I'll do a proper thank you in just a moment. Um, I was just I was just going to pick up on 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 that. Um, uh, yeah, I think there is something here about. Uh, one host uh, killing another in order to sort of give them the chance to sort of reboot and 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 try again at gaining sentience. Um, we saw that um, I can't remember exactly which episode it was episode eight or nine um, with uh, Angela, uh, the sort of the present day Angela who told Teddy to go back and try again, effectively, uh, when she was we, when she was killing him. Um, uh, so there is there is something going on there. But in that specific thing, I think it's probably most likely that this is what happens in the aftermath of the, uh, the massacre. I think I can certainly see Dolores going down and on a killing spree and trying to kill as many of the people at that party as she possibly can. And I think that is what we're going to see a lot of, uh, probably in flashbacks, as, as, as Justin said, but in the first couple of episodes of what actually happened. So I think that we'll see that after the massacre or after Dolores starts shooting, everybody just scatters. And then we're going to have... Uh, the, the security teams uh, who are being devastated by what Maeve is doing, the moment that they start regaining control and once Stubbs comes back onto the scene, uh, they are then going to go and try and capture or, 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 or rescue, I should say, rescue all of the, uh, the guests who were there. At the same time, Dolores is going to be coming and trying to hunt them down and kill them. So I think we're going to have this kind of cat and mouse affair going on um, over the first couple of episodes in the aftermath of that massacre. And I think the most likely thing is that that is Dolores hunting down uh, the people who escaped from the massacre. So, so that's that's personally what I think there. Uh, let's just have a have a couple of uh, quick uh, checks. I got on. And let's remember, too, that it's, you know, this is Wyatt doing this. Anthony Hopkins, our Dr. Ford, you know, made her access that narrative. So there's also going to be Dolores trying to come back. She's going to be struggling within as well. And so Dolores necessarily might not want to be killing all the guests. And they're definitely going to, you know, invoke some empathy into the, the characters. Because, like I said, with the addition of this new security force, you're definitely not going to want to see everybody get murdered. And all the people like Stubbs and Elsie that we liked were conveniently taken out by the finale. So it was like, yeah, kill them all. Because we didn't know they were either the man or black or nameless people that we saw doing cruel things. So we're definitely going to see some empathetic, uh, you know, human uh, characters uh, as well. Um, I see Ty Cat said uh, something about that. Uh, I think it's Bill. Uh, he's always quoting, let's drink to the woman with the white shoes. Uh, yeah, I, 
somebody asked me about that a long time ago. That's an old wedding quote. Uh, that's just an, uh, that's another example of Ford, like never actually like it, there's that thing that's saying you don't need to quote great men to be great men. That's like the type of guy Ford is. He, he's constantly just quoting other people. Uh, that's that's an old like wedding. I don't want to say the rest of it. It's kind of filthy, actually. But uh you just look, type that into Google and you'll see the rest of that quote. People used to say it at uh, old uh, Southern weddings a lot. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so that, that character is, uh, as far as I can tell, that is uh, Wild Bill Hickok, uh, who's uh, a, a sort of a housed version of Wild Bill Hickok, the, 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 the real character from, from real history. Deadwood, who, yeah. Uh, uh, who, uh, who Ford, it was one of the first ones that he created obviously at the time they were trying to create real characters from from history as part of this uh, and and it was an early prototype and he just sort of kept him there because he liked him because it was an, one of the early ones uh, and so um one of the early questions we had actually in this stream was somebody saying is is is, is there a chance that ford might have left some information with him because he's kept him around for so long uh, i don't know that's possible um uh, but certainly i don't think that uh, uh, that there's too much more to him really than that just a nice drinking companion for for ford i think that was his his main role there um okay guys with well, let's let's have a last uh, last check to see if there's any other questions we've been missing is there anything else you've picked up on uh, justin in the chat oh, a lot of good questions um but yeah not, not really i i like how people are uh you know that's what I mean about the show bringing up so many good conversations. People are, you know, really thinking about what type of person does this make William, you know, to go this route and all that. And that's the thing. It's like, my opinion is just an opinion and, and it's nothing is, you know, nothing is absolutely going to be the answer for a lot of these questions, which might be disappointing for some, but for people like me that love just, you know, discussing these topics, these broader, you know, issues that it brings up, it's just so enjoyable to have because you end up learning, about a lot of different, not only storytelling, but you know, like I'm learning about bioethics now and stuff like this because I talk to other people about Westworld. I'm talking with people that are actually work in the artificial intelligence business and build AI. You know, like it's just bringing up things that I wasn't even ever interested in. And so I think it's it's great to see a community of people just caring. So uh, yeah, that's all I guess. I'm just happy to be talking about Westworld. <laughs> Absolutely, me too. Um, I just did want to very quickly pick up on uh, Chrissy Voldstones uh, said. Uh, what's Justin's channel called? I will let him uh, uh, say that in just one moment. Um, uh, guys, I wanted to, to personally just say thank you to, uh, to all the people <coughs> who've, uh, who've done the Super Chats. That's incredibly generous of you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we, we will, as I say, I will be producing um, uh, new videos every, uh, every Tuesday from now on uh, on Westworld. Uh, Justin, do you want to just uh, let people know where to find you on the internet? Yeah, my name is Justin Thomas, and get this, my channel's name is The Justin Thomas Show, because I'm creative. Um, yeah, and it should be definitely in the info. I, I've been covering Westworld since I first started my channel about a year ago. I run the Amino. Uh, you can find that in my link. It's a great community of people. Anybody that's watching uh, that's from there, come and join us. We're an official community for Westworld. Uh, it, it's like a mobile Reddit, so uh, come and see us. And yeah, I look forward to just, uh, you know, like I said, I love uh, talking with Robert, and I feel that our content complements uh the others uh, quite well so um yeah anybody that wants to get involved with the community with the conversation uh, go to my channel but not only my channel go to the community and, and hook up with other people and i mean literally like i said the, the possibilities for conversations are, are endless so i don't think there's ever been a show like this to say it's ambitious is you know it, it's more ambitious than any show i've seen uh ever to be honest, um, for all the topics and themes uh, of this actual series. So I, I really want to see them stick their landing. So I hope the five season works out for them. But uh, no matter what, I'm going to be there the whole time talking about it. And that's really all that matters. So uh, yeah, I just want to thank you guys uh, for having me. Thank you, Robert, for having me. And, uh, hopefully I'll be back on and definitely uh, get the internet fixed here. Uh, so yeah, but besides that, go to my channel, check it out. There's a whole backlog of Westworld videos that need to be watched. Fantastic. Uh, thanks, Justin. Uh, do go check out his channel, The Justin Thomas Show, uh, uh, and and subscribe. I think you will like what you find there. There's a lot of really good uh, content there. He 
digs into a lot of uh, specific issues. Like I can remember there was one he did uh, a couple of weeks ago about how do the guns work, the host's guns. Uh, it's a question that I uh, I didn't know the answer to, but he's 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 dug into it and found it out. So if you want to get the uh, some really uh, detailed and good videos, do go there. Check out the Amino. Uh, thank you again to everyone here in the chat. It's been fantastic seeing you all. Uh, apologies if we didn't get to your question, but thank you so much for all the amazing questions you've had. Uh, if you'd like to check out my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash indeepgeek, that would be fantastic. Uh, but I will see you again uh, next Tuesday, or I'm going to be doing a Game of Thrones uh, a live stream on Thursday. Okay, guys, thank you all very much. Thank you to Justin, and thank you. I shall see you soon. Bye.